So after years of experimenting with different setups, testing countless apps and products, and figuring out basically what works for me, I finally landed on a setup that feels right. So this is the minimalist setup I use for coding as a software engineer. And I'm a digital nomad, so I travel a lot. So I'm looking for high quality portable products. And I enjoy programming when I enter the flow state. So simplicity is really big for me. And just being able to focus for long periods of time is at the core of everything I use. So in this video, I'm gonna share the hardware I use, apps I currently rely on, and tools that help me maintain that flow and get the most out of work. So let's start with the hardware and the main thing is my Mac. And all I use, and it's nothing special, it's just a Mac Air M1 2020. And this has been without doubt the best tech purchase of my life. It's been really good value for me. It's been five years that I've had it now, but it's so small and portable. I can code with it, do all my personal projects, and it's fine with that. Um, I might be upgrading to a pro um, just for like video editing but yeah i'm kind of like wedded into apple at this point but really love this device and i travel with two laptops so i have this and also i have a standard dell precision one i get with work which is pretty good and some of the comments i get the most on social media when i post is that i just use one screen for coding and this kind of freaks people out now everyone's different and i actually experimented with two screens for a while and i think i just value that simplicity of having one screen so yeah, I find getting into that flow state, if you have one thing to work on or one task, for me, I work better when I can just have one screen and can focus on that task. But a good compromise and the most recent thing I've added to my setup has been an iPad Air. It's a 10th generation. And it's a digital nomad. I don't actually have a TV, so it's handy for that. And I'm also quite big on the idea of having a second brain, which is one place where I store everything I learn in tech in one resource. And I used to actually do this handwritten, so I had this big notebook which I'll show on screen and it just got to the point where I was like okay I need to convert this digital so I use an app called Notability where I just store everything I'm learning in tech so I always go back to it which is really cool so I'll link that down below you can check it out if you want but I use my iPad for that and I've also got the Apple Magic Keyboard which to be honest it's just nothing special the only reason I have it is that it syncs well with a Mac and it's portable but yeah it does the job and for a mouse so I've tried a few different mouses the Apple one wasn't good but this one, it's a Logitech MS something or other, I'll put it on screen, but it just feels so good. It's got a ton of different buttons, which I don't use, but it just feels really premium. And if you're gonna to be touching this thing all day, I mean, mouse isn't the number one priority for me, but it's, this one's really good. One thing I am big on though, and that's really cheap, is to get a laptop stand. And I actually have two of them. I have a big one, which looks kind of OTT if you're in like a coffee shop, and I have a more subtle one to use. And I think it's just very small, like they cost like $10, $20 on Amazon, but the, it's just so good for your posture, so definitely worth the investment. And yeah, I have two, I always carry them around just in case I'm in a coffee shop, because even if it is for like an hour, it does add up. And so I've got a really cheap one, I don't know where I got that one from, but I've got a black one from Nextan, but also Roost is good, but you can just get any, it doesn't matter. So if you take one thing from this video, get a laptop stand. And one of my favorite things about being a software engineer is that sometimes you can just spend the whole afternoon listening to music. And I love that and solving problems and coding. If it's light work, I listen to podcasts, but usually like lo-fi, no lyric music, and I use AirPods. And I'll put in the description a playlist I have on Spotify, which you can check out. It's like music I like to listen to when I'm coding, um, but I refuse to spend money on AirPods because I just lose them so goddamn much. All right, next is this headset and microphone from Jabra, and I don't actually listen to music on it. I just use it for the microphone because if you're working from coffee shops, if you're a remote worker or a digital nomad, this is essential. So I've had one or two years where I'd be in these really loud environments like coffee shops. So I was like, okay, I need to get a really good mic. And the sound in it's not so good. It's just the microphone's amazing where you, there could be a coffee grinder going off next to you and no one will know. So this one was like, I think it was only $80 as well. So a good microphone is essential for me. All right, that's the hardware done. Let's move on to the software. So this is all the apps I use. And let's start with the most important one for any programmer is the code editor. And I use two. So I use VS Code and Cursor. Obviously Cursor is built on top of VS Code, 
but I like the differentiation. So I use VS Code when I don't want to use AI and I'm learning a new language or framework, for example. I use Cursor in every other situation, like if I need to make a personal project quick. And using Cursor is like having a caffeinated senior developer 24 seven who doesn't sleep. It's just such a useful tool, but I'm very conscious of my use of AI. And I try to prioritize learning over productivity. You know, just bashing out loads of AI generated code is really easy nowadays. But I think if you use it too much, you'll progress really quick as a junior. But when you get to that mid-level, you might struggle. And these are a few of the extensions I've been using for years now. So I use Quokka as a good one. So this is good for printing things in the code. This is really helpful for data structures and algorithms, for example. Git graph is a good one. This is a way to visualize exactly what's going on in Git and also to do highlight. This will manage your to-dos in your code base so you can mark your code with your to-dos. And I mentioned earlier notability. So I, I like having apps which do multiple things. So this is my second brain. So anytime I'm learning anything in tech, I always have this open and I'm constantly writing things down, but I also use it to draw diagrams. For example, if I'm making an API and I can visualize exactly what I need to do. I also use clean my Mac. This will just optimize and get rid of any junk on your Mac. I also have, I can't work without a Pomodoro kind of timer thing. So I used to use this one and it just got discontinued. So I used it for like years. So I've just recently started using the Flow app, which is like another Pomodoro one. It just tracks how much I'm studying, how much I'm coding. And there's loads of these Pomodoro apps, but there's not many that track it. So this one tracks it, it's free. And just tracking how much I'm learning on a month by month basis is really motivational for me. And that is my setup. So I'm interested to hear from you guys though, like what products do you use? What software do you use? Any apps that really help you as a software engineer or working in tech? And where I filmed this video is this beautiful location. It's in Segres, Portugal. And my next video is gonna be about my time there. So subscribe for that and I'll see you in the next one. Happy coding.